from the start, really. So writing began when I was a journalist with the Financial Times. And whilst I was writing on West Africa and then Indonesia, which was where I was based as a foreign correspondent, in the background I was writing fiction. Uh, but I've never attempted to polish it up and publish it until recently. So what sparked the interest in doing a work of fiction but based on a very famous Bath Georgian character? Well, it's based on the grandson of Bo Nash, so the main character is Bell Nash. And because, maybe because I only got a D in history A level, what I like to do is, is be a little bit playful with history and to look at history through the prism of fiction. And by so doing, to raise the issues which interest me, which are pertinent to today, issues of bigotry, albeit within a comic setting, and place them back to where they were in the 19th century, uh, early 19th century, but which were largely omitted in the literature of the day. So it's a work of fiction, but obviously, as an historical novel, uh, you've got to do a fair bit of factual research to write it? Yeah, and that would be correct. So I've, uh, as it happened, I studied 19th century history till I was bored in the teeth when I was in my teens. Uh, that served me quite well now. And I tend to read both uh, on subjects and around subjects. So I might read as much about William Beckford and Fonthill Abbey as I would directly about Bath even though Beckford is a very passing character in my book and not a main character. Um, so I think that one, uh, as an author, one researches both what's in immediate focus and both what's on the fringes of one's focus when writing. How did you come up with this character and what is the plot? I was probably inebriated, uh, I, I think, or maybe I was going for a long walk or maybe I was taking a bath. Um, uh, maybe going for a drive, always frightfully dangerous being creative when driving, but it does spur creativity. I remember I started writing it uh, on a um, very short holiday, working holiday in New York, and when I decided that I wished to move to Bath, and I just sat down one evening and began uh, writing what is actually the third novel in the series. So I started writing the, the series in 2014. The uh, main characters are a city councillor of Bath, Bell Nash, grandson of Beau, who is as openly gay as one could be, which wasn't really very possible because if you were uh, gay you could be hung for same-sex relations. Nevertheless, there were as many gay people around in the day as there are now. Uh, the second character is his closest friend, Mrs Gaia Champion, who's the widow of a leading uh, liberal-minded solicitor in Bath, Hercules Champion, and she yearns to become Lady Magistrate of Bath 90 years before women could occupy positions of public authority. And so she is a prototype outlier feminist. And so both of them battle against uh, the bigotry of the day, so particularly misogyny, homophobia, racism, uh, and, and they're liberal-minded, they are Benthamites from a historical perspective. But this is all done in, in a humorous way? It's all done in a humorous way, because as much as I try and be serious, and I tend to sound serious when talking about the books, whenever I sit down and write, I just start writing comic novels. So the plots interweave the social issues into scenarios which might be more uh, identifiable as those which could come out of Woodhouse, say. Um, and I was also inspired by Armstead Mopaz's Tales of a City, based in San Francisco, uh, which tell the stories of lives over an extended period, a decade of, of time. And I wish to replicate that for late Georgian early Regency Bath. You've chosen a city uh, to base your novel in, which has been over the years well written about, both factually and with works of fiction. You don't compare yourself in any way, I suppose, to Jane Austen? Well, no, uh, but I would be inspired by Austen. I mean, certainly I, I read a lot of Austen at school and, and, and since, uh, but I, I haven't used Austen as a historical source. I haven't gone back and reread Austen whilst writing the books, and I, I've tended to stay away 
I've never read a Bridgerton in my life. Uh, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, I, uh, you know, have read Bronte, but uh, Charlotte Bronte, but um, that's a, a little bit later uh, in some style. Um, so yeah, certainly, there, there's I've drawn upon Austen in terms of the way characters address each other uh, in terms of a formality of relations uh, between some characters. What, why set the book in the Georgian period? Why couldn't you write about Bath now? Because I want the books to be satires. I want the books to be historical whilst being social commentaries on today. So to some extent, my two main characters, Belle and Gaia, are people with 21st century social liberal mores dropped back into the 1830s. And that's what I find interesting. If I was just writing about them today, there'd be one in a million. They're, they're, sorry, there'd be you know one in ten or one in five. Uh, whereas back then they were one in a million, and that makes them much more interesting to write about. Bill, it sounds like an entertaining read. Uh, I will let you know how entertained I Please was do, once yes. I've read it. Yes. But you you say this is one in four. It's one in it's one in four. I've written four. I've just started actually the fifth last week. So I, I wrote the fourth one during lockdown. Uh, I wrote the first three almost in reverse. I wrote the third one first, then the second, then the first one second, and the third one, and, and the uh, second one third. Um, I, need, I did it that way so I would both commit myself to a trilogy, but also by not writing the first one first, it gives you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the character, get to know the characters before you introduce them to others and there's always a chance then to go back and revise the third one accordingly. So um, I tend to be someone who throws himself in at the deep end when, when it comes to these things. Well, Bell Nash and the Bar Souffle has been published recently and is available in bookshops across Bath? Bookshops across Bath. It's been called Genius, Incisive, Hilarious, Outlandish by Matthew Paris. It's been called Funny, Clever, Silly in the Right Way and Strangely Moving by Jeanette Winterson. It's been called A Real Romp of a Read by Alexander McCall Smith. Um, it's got five star reviews on Goodreads and, uh, and Amazon and it's available in Toppings, Mr. B's, Oldfield Park um, and the ubiquitous, oh no, Walter Studs and the ubiquitous Amazon, of course. <laughs> You've got that off to a T. Bill, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you.